All right. Oh, I we, believe- forgot, we forgot to pray, but we'll pray as, as a whole. Yes, we'll pray together. I believe we are live. So excited to come before all of our friends again on this beautiful. Right. Well, well, is it going to be beautiful? Because it's no. really dark. It's really it's dark here. It is dark. Well, doesn't that just set up the scripture for today? It does. It does match. Oh my it goodness. matches really well. Too well. Yeah, you're right. All right. A, little, a little too well. Good morning, everybody. So good to see you this morning. It's making my day being able to start my day with all of you and Jesus. All right. Yeah. Isn't it? Oh, we are. We're working for some reason. We are on. Extra delay. Oh, there's an extra delay. No, that's me on my end. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Deborah. Good morning, Colleen. Good morning, Beth and Lorna and Terry. Good morning. Terry, how did those floors turn out? I was praying (laughs) that they were the right color. Good morning, Lori. Good morning, Connie and Ellen and Becky. Good morning, Sue. Good morning, Stacy. Good morning, Susan. Good morning. Hi, Melody. I miss you. Good morning, Janet, Michelle. Good morning, Emily. Hmm. Hi, Sue. Hi, Mrs. Crownover. Hi, Mama. <laughs> Hi, Lauren. Hi, Patricia. Good morning, Lauren and uh, or Laura and Lisa and Karen. Good morning, Rhonda. So happy to have all you ladies and men. I can't discount. I'm being a little biased when I say women. I guess there's some men that are joining us, and I'm so excited about that. Yes, I do. I see that as well, and that's pretty awesome. Good morning, Joyce. Terry, they're still getting installed this week. Okay, I figured it might take a while. Hi, Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, Nina. Good morning, Laura. Mm. I loved your picture on Facebook yesterday, Laura, of your barn mug. Yeah. I love all these pictures people are sending of their time with Jesus, with their coffee or their tea or whatever it might be when their Bible open. It's just, it's blessing my heart. It's beautiful. It is, uh, it is, I'm sometimes I'm speechless by just what God put on our heart as a nudge. Well, yeah. I lied. It wasn't a nudge. It was, it was a swift kick in the pants to, to, to do this. And it uh, was, but I, I really appreciate that you and I, um, bravely just without overthinking it and making it all perfect before we launched it. And we just are showing up. Yep. However, good morning, Angie. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Kathy. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Michelle. Michelle, what are you doing? Are you on your way to work? Praying you up this morning, girl. Front you know lines what? right there. Good if morning, I, Leanne. If I understand correctly, I see some teachers on here. And oh, yeah? I just lift them up that they are creating um, time like any workers. I mean, you and I, we work from home. And we're homeschooling our kiddos when we can fit that in too in our day. Yep. But I just want a little extra special praise for teachers who are trying to figure out all this online learning and they're fitting in and nurses and doctors who are fitting it in before doing the really um, extra special work this season. So true. Wow. Agreement to that. Good morning, everybody. Everyone's hopping on. We are, we are extra um, excited to be on this morning. We've got some heavy uh, words spoken by David, but um, this is where God wants to take us. So we are going to be women of courage to really understand what he wants to say to us today. Cause I, I just woke up with a knowing, like I wrote this down in my prayer journal this morning. I have a knowing that um, there's going to be healing today. I really feel like God's going to really tangibly touch a lot of women and men this morning. Um, I don't, we don't really even know what this is going to look like. We like, we're, we're kind of like, what do you want to do today, Lord? So we're just, we're just open. We're ready to receive what he has. Um, but, uh, I love that. So thank you for joining us because I just undoubtedly know that he is here right now with us in this, and he is speaking to you right now. And, um, 
So I just am praying over all our hearts are just wide open to receive what he has. So it's 801, Tara. What do you think? Should should we should I just open up in prayer or you want to yeah. open up in prayer and we'll get started? Oh, I'd love I'd love for you to to open us up and let's get started. Okay. So Father, I just uh, thank you. I thank you for this time. I thank you that you have um, just wooed our hearts so close to you right now. And uh, Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your word that is, uh, it's alive and it's active um, and it penetrates our heart in a way that nothing else can. Thank you that you tell us your word is like a double-edged sword, just so gently piercing the areas in our heart that need to be touched by you. And um, Father, I, like I just said, I don't, I don't exactly know, Tara doesn't know either what you have for us this morning, but we know that 22 is placed in our heart. We know that these are hard words, these are difficult words, but this is just truth where we sit oftentimes in our life. And it's not something that we're supposed to skip over. We're supposed to do the hard things with you. And um, so Father, right now, would you just envelop us with your presence? Would you follow your Holy Spirit on this time? Would you just meet every woman where she's at, knowing because of being with you this past week, week and a half, that you are our restorer, that you are our healer, that you are our redeemer, that you are our papa, you're our daddy, and you are a good daddy, that you place us on a rock and a safe place up high where the enemy can't touch us, can't, uh, can't speak lies over us. Father, we just want to be engulfed in your presence. Father, thank you that uh, you're enough for us. Um, that's it. There's just, you're enough. All the things that I've been chasing my whole life, um, it ended up to be just you, you're it. And so father, I just pray that right now hearts receive that. Um, and, uh, father, wherever any woman is at right now, would you meet her? Uh, maybe it's a time of great ang ang uh, anguish, uh, uh, despair, hopelessness, uh, depression, uh, maybe some joy, maybe some encouragement that people are experiencing right now. Father, just meet them, whatever emotion that they're in, Lord God. Just meet them where they're at and do a new work within us. I really truly believe, Father, that there's going to be hearts that are going to be repastured. There's going to be lives that are going to be healed this morning because of your word. That's what your word does. It never falls short. It never gets old. It's, it's always alive and it's always active. So, Father, we give this time over to you. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. So good to see you on here. And it's not, it's not the greatest day out there. It's looking a little, a uh, little dark. It is. It is. I, uh, I needed some false light in my office because it's extra dark today. It is. And I think it kind of matches um, the scripture and I, I missed it. Did you post 22? I did, did. last night. Okay. Yeah. So I, I, oh, I definitely missed it. Uh, but preparing for 22 and I'll, I'll just say a little bit, and then I'd love for you to introduce like what you and I were talking about yesterday with which scripture we would read, um, this morning. And I mean, I, my palms are sweaty. Yeah, <laughs> mine too. I, my, I'm nervous. What is I'm going nervous on? To go here. Well, because the enemy doesn't want us to go here. I just have, I just know that because I think it's a game changer here. I think this, this brings freedom. What we're going to be talking about the very freedom that we've been longing to have. Well, and I honestly, I can't articulate the, the feeling I have for reading this verse, for, for reading this chapter, for whatever verses we get through, because it's a long one, um, for the, the passion joy that you and I have for this topic that you're about to introduce us. And, and I think it could be because we're in a season of, of deep struggle and every single person, and we didn't even see every name. Uh, and I'm glad I didn't because there is a, I guess, a burden on my heart for myself, but also for all of the people who are listening in and potentially right. changing the patterns of their day. <laughs> um, and so I think it's that I would prefer sometimes when, when being in front of people this way and choosing scripture that is more hopeful during the hopelessness and light during our dark times today, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that it was, I mean, you and I didn't purposely picked, pick scripture that was all um, comfy. Right. <laughs> but today is like a super uncomfortable, like truly my hands are sweating and I, and I, and I can't articulate why other than I must not know what God knows and that <laughs> we're just moved. 
I'm surprised. <laughs> um, right. And and that we're moving forward anyway. We're we're just doing it anyway because you and I both had this on our heart. And and uh, I couldn't believe how it came together yesterday when we both knew we needed to pick a scripture like this. So go ahead and um, if you don't mind, because I think you're going to articulate yourself a lot better than me right now. So if you could just share what we talked about yesterday. Yeah, I just reading some of the comments, Lorna said a prayer that carries us from great suffering to great joy is really what summarized 22. And that's so, so accurate. <laughs> exactly. um, this really comes from uh, something that I've been wrestling with for a long time, really, really since I in, uh, really met Jesus, which was just over about 10 years ago, 11, 12 years ago now. And I, I mean, really met him, like encountered his love, his love that just uh, freed me. It doesn't mean I didn't mess up and doesn't mean I didn't take two steps back oftentimes and only one step forward. That's happened a lot in the last 10 years, but truly where I encountered his love in a way that I, it became real to me. It became, it became everything that I had been searching for my whole life, right? Not just wearing the label, not just showing up in church in the church pews and feeling defeated and feeling very lukewarm. I mean, a love where I, I truly believe it was hand planted in my heart from the time of conception that I finally tasted and so I recognize, though, that that came from one ingredient, and that came from the ingredient of suffering. And that's what 22 ultimately is about. And so um, I'm not going to get into the details right now just because of personal stuff with one of my children. But yesterday, I don't even, I need to share this with you, Terry, yet, but yesterday just was a really hard day and um, with one of my children. Whew, and... I just found myself at the barn yesterday. It was just, no one, no one was there. I was surprised that no one was walking around. And um, just, I just needed time with God, you know, because I just was not acting like, the, like, like a Christian woman should be acting or thinking. And so I just needed to be repairing it. But it's what we talked about yesterday. God is the one who reparents us. And um, I just began to walk and walk and listen and listen. And just let him medicate my heart in a way I so desperately needed from my dad. And um, it was, it brought me to the center place at the barn. I don't know if you've ever been to, to the barn, to barn 45 before, but, and I know it's beautiful there. I know there's peace, but I'm usually really busy that I don't have time to just take it in. And in my suffering, I stood in the middle of that courtyard and I just started to look around and there's this glorious barn that just was like the sunlight was glowing on it. It literally glowed. And then there was this pavilion, right? And that was glowing. And then there's this, I look around and there's this chapel and it's just like, there's no words to describe how cute this thing is, right? And the ground and, it, and the rocks and the grass and the trees and his light. And it, I just was almost brought to my knees. And um, it was in that moment that, um, I, I just took it in and went, how did this happen? Like, where did this come from? It, it didn't come because we had a, a million dollars in the bank. We didn't, we didn't have, we didn't know, we didn't even know where any of it was gonna come from. Like, where did this come from? And all of a sudden he just, he like washed over me and he said, Joy, it came from anguish. It came from a marriage that was falling apart. That was nothing but ashes. This is what I do. This is who I am. When you walk through the suffering, through the furnace of anguish, that I will turn your ashes and I will make them into something beauty and into something beautiful. And I will, I will do something that you can't even begin to imagine in, in your best framework, in your best, you know, thinking in your most original, you know, creative mindset. We could never, never, let me just say that again to you right now, never be able to manufacture or be able to make up or to be able to think what God can do in your life if you're willing to walk through the anguish and through the suffering. And I'm really passionate about this subject because not only because I'm a counselor, but because of my own life, I see how I tried to bypass the suffering. I just didn't want it. We as human beings, we don't like to suffer. We don't want to suffer. It doesn't feel good. I hate it. Yesterday was not a good day. I just kept saying, God, take me out of this. Like change that one's heart. Like, don't just change him and I'll be okay. And he's like, no, 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 this, this has very little to do with that person. This has a lot to do with you, Joy. And so when we allow ourselves to feel the pain, to experience the anguish, 
to walk through it day by day. And sometimes you're not going to get a one night, a one day experience like I did at the barn yesterday. My marriage, that was, I mean, I'm talking, like, I don't know how many years of anguish, years and years and years and years. And finally, when I stopped trying to go around the pain and try to, you know, white knuckle it on my own and try to figure out how to make this right on my own. And I don't want to experience the pain and just sit in it. And when I finally just surrendered and felt the pain, felt the withdrawal, I mean, it's like withdrawing from a drug, right? We don't want to withdraw from something that we have clung to as our coping mechanism, as our security blanket, which was control for me. I wanted to make this marriage work my way. And I didn't want to let go of my own counterfeit comforts that I was receiving outside my marriage for the very things that I wasn't getting in my marriage because I wasn't getting it from him. Because the very things, what, what, the, the, when you are feeling insecure, the very thing that you run to during your insecurity is your security. That's how you'll figure it out. Is it God or is it something else? And over and over again, I was looking for something else, some other, or some other security in my life. I hope this is making sense and I'm not going on too much of a tangent. But I just, there's so much to, do, to talk about with suffering. And we're going to get into it a little bit more. Um, so what do we do in the suffering? If you're, if you're saying, Joy, okay, God wants me to suffer, right? What does that mean? Why would he want me to suffer? Well, we find throughout the word of God, and if I had another hour and a half with you, I could, I could really just talk so much more about the significance of walking through in order to get to um, but, but Tara, I don't want to do that because this would, this would obviously take up too much time. But um, yesterday at the barn, I sat on the back patio and um, I began to open up to Isaiah. Isaiah 40-ish is so beautiful. And one of the passages from Isaiah was saying, in your anguish, in your suffering, he's basically saying, I'm going to tell you what to do. And I didn't want to hear this. And I told God yesterday, I don't want to hear this, but I had to sit on it. And it said for me to wait. Um, it said to, it said to, I don't even know if I wrote it down. It just basically said to wait upon the Lord. Yeah. And I just circled it and I circled it and I circled it. Yeah. And so I started to look into what waiting is. So what do you want me to do? I'm just supposed to wait on this. Like, am I supposed to discipline this one, this child? Am I supposed to, what do you want to do with my heart? That's feeling really bitter right now, because oftentimes in our suffering, it can make us bitter or can make us better. And when we take the route of bitterness, there's a verse, I think it's Hebrews 12, 14. I might not be right on that. The only reason I know it so well is because I lived in bitterness, the spirit of it. But Hebrews tells us that when we operate from a spirit of bitterness, a root of bitterness, it says that it troubles us, like it troubles you. Yeah. But it defiles everyone around you. So when we are, we are choosing bitterness over betterness, we think that it's only troubling us, but it's our children. It's the people that you do life with. It's your spouse. It's your sister. It's whatever, whoever's in your life. They're the ones that are being affected by our bitterness. And that's why enemy, this, the biggest trap for the enemy is in a time of suffering is going to try to get you to go bitter. And God's going, no, no, no. I'm going to use this for you to be better. And I want you to wait upon me. So before we get into the scripture verse, I looked that up and to be waiting upon the Hebrew, the Hebrew meaning of, of, of waiting because in the Old Testament that was written in Hebrew, it means to be tightly woven like a braid. Like think about when you got your hair French braided or you French braided another, you know, girl's hair. And in other words, like the, the blows of your emotions, the blows of your circumstances when the hair is just kind of like this, right? It just is tossed to and fro. But when you braid that and it says tightly, it's like woven so tightly together, right? Like this that the winds of your circumstances cannot allow it to toss to and fro. And you have woven yourself where it looks like one piece with you and God. That's what waiting looks like. This, not this, but this. And in that suffering, when you are doing this with him, that's where he begins to refine you and begins to heal you in the pain, in the suffering. And it only provides the joy that we're all longing for. Joy only comes from anguish. It's a natural byproduct. Healing only comes from suffering. Restoration only comes from experiencing pain of releasing that which we've been clinging to and walking through the trial, walking through the fire. I mean, it's, it, this, is, this is why Tara's feeling heavy. This is why I'm feeling heavy. And I have no idea what y'all are saying. So I'm praying that this is making sense to you girls. Amen. Oh, 
but I just uh, this one is this one is a heated topic for me because I have I, I have a I will take this to my deathbed. This is the key ingredient, women, for us and men, friends, children, people of God. Um, and I honestly, I just feel like I just want to say friends because that's what I feel we all are in this community. That this is it. This is it. This is us walking through the suffering and finally saying in our in, in, in the whisper of our voice back to God saying, I'm ready to do it. Because if that means that if going from point A to point B, which is where I want to get to, and I have to walk through it, I'm willing to do what it takes. It's temporary, the suffering. It's temporary, but it is worth it. Because what happens is most of us spend our entire life going around the mountain over and over and over and over again. And we never really fulfill the calling and purpose you will find out what your calling and your purpose is on life when you walk through the season of suffering. And I have a feeling there's a lot of us in it right now that are walking through the season of suffering because it's in that suffering that he gives you that empathy that you're going to need to be strengthened. Right. Um, it, someone, when his, I had heard someone say before that it's a preparation for our calling. It's a preparation time in that season of suffering and anguish, because I, I don't know about you, but when I bring my troubles to someone and they've never dealt with it, they never been in it. They have no idea what it's like to be in my shoes. Um, I, it just doesn't do a whole lot. But when I have someone look me and stare me right in the eyes and said, I too had a mar marriage that was falling apart. I know what that feels like. I too have a child that was wandering or whatever it might be. I know what that feels like. And let me tell you, I walked through that furnace of anguish and this is where he has me. This is where he put me. This is what he taught me. That is when the, this whole world begins to change. We no longer stay in survival mode because survival ma mode makes us run. And, mm -hmm. and when we get ourselves out of survival mode and into, okay, I'm gonna, I might have to suffer and feel this pain for a moment, that makes us run to God, not away from God. And we have this whole world, unfortunately, most people are in just in survival mode. It's all about us. I just need to get through this. Okay, I'm gonna end here, but I wanna say this one story. So I'm reading about the, um, you know, Easter's coming up and I'm reading about Mary Magdalene. She's the first woman that actually encounters Jesus right after he resurrects from the dead. Let's just, sorry, men, if you're listening, but let me just put this out there. It was a woman who was the very first Christian that ever walked planet earth. He chose a woman. I think that's pretty miraculous. He chose a woman to show himself to for the very first time and, and to go be a preacher, to go teach his word to other people. And so when he, when she sees Jesus for the very first time, she is weeping. She is suffering. She is in anguish. It says that there's tears dropping because she, she, she's at his graveyard. Basically she's at his tomb. He's not there. She thinks he's gone. And she literally turns her back from the tomb and she like knocks into somebody and she's like, Oh, I'm sorry. I I'm in her, in her tears. She's like embarrassed. You know, when we see people in our tears, like I was worried someone was going to show up at the barn yesterday because I'm in tears. But, you know, sometimes it is what it is and that's okay. And so she's got this, she's embarrassed. She knocks into him and, and he says, you know, something to her. And she says, she thought he was the gardener. And I love that because she, in her, in her anguish, in her suffering, what she thought was just commonality of life was just the gardener she was running into. She was actually running into Jesus himself. And it made me think about, you know, when we're in our season of suffering, in our own season of anguish, the very things that we think are just common, you know, maybe right now, especially in this quarantine we're in, right? It's like, is this every day? I don't even know what day of the week it is. You know, I don't even know what time it is. It's, you know, it just seems like it's just the normality and the commonality of life and the just mundaneness of it all. It's just one after another after another. And yet we're suffering through it, right? We're kind of weeping and we're crying. And when is this going to be over? And we turn around and we bump into a gardener and it's just a normal person. And I really feel like God is saying this morning, like, maybe that's not the gardener. You know, maybe, maybe that Bible study that you're on every morning at eight o'clock isn't just a Bible study. Maybe it's Jesus showing up. Maybe it's him that's resurrecting the very dead things in your life this morning. Maybe it's in the anguish that Mary was experiencing. Maybe it was in the heartache and the trials and the tribulation that she was experiencing that moment. Maybe it was in that, that she finally saw Jesus with her eyes of her of her flesh, she could only see a gardener. But when she allowed the anguish and the suffering and the despair and the heartache to be able to see from the eyes of her heart, she was able to finally see Jesus. She heard his voice. That's how she recognized him.
And so this morning I'm praying as we walk through 22 and it's already, oh my goodness, sorry, Tara. I, sorry, are you kidding? It's 821. Oh, yeah. um, no. You know, I think I want, what, I, what I'm praying is that we, we don't see just black and white words here, that we don't just see a gardener, that we see Jesus, we hear his voice. Uh, because right now, today, today, he wants you to walk through the anguish, walk through the suffering, not alone not with hopelessness, but recognizing, as Tara said yesterday, I have not been able to get that off my mind, that shadow, that just means that there is light behind it. And Kim, if you're watching right now, your text, your text thread that you put on there, that the shadow just is something that's small and it makes it look larger than it actually is. Whew, that is solid truth. And so we're going to just dive right in. Now that I gave you that very long intro to uh, 22, we are going to um, dive into what it means to suffer. And this is why God called David a man after my own heart, because David was not afraid to suffer. You will not find a man that pretended everything was perfect. Everything is good. I'm great. I have no problems. You will not find that in David. David is like straight up, God, where are you? Because I'm not experiencing you right now. How many of us feel that way, but we don't want to admit it. Oh, David, he penned it. Write it out. Tell God, I don't even think you're here. Tell him. He wants us to say that in our pain. The more we stuff, the more toxic it is. It's almost like it's almost like putting toxic chemicals in you and just keeping it there. Your body is going to eventually, right, reveal itself. The toxicity is going to come out in other ways. We're going to get it out and put it in the presence of God. So let's open to Psalm 22. We're not going to read all of Psalm 22 because we don't want to keep you longer than we should be keeping you. Um, and 22 is really long. So we were thinking we're probably just going to get to 10-ish. And then we'll, when we get to 10, we'll, um, we'll go from there. But um, let's start uh, at um, verse 122. Yeah. Tara, you got it. Sorry for taking up 20 some minutes. No, on this, don't, but don't let's get into that. his word. And I... I um... No, I was hanging on every word you were saying. And, you know, sometimes when I come before the, the Lord and I read, um, I read scripture, sometimes it comes out as eloquent as joy often speaks. And um, I think, I think the, my clammy hands and my racing heart is, isn't much different. Well, no, let me say this better. It is way different than reading the first verse. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, that's why I want you to keep talking because I'm going to just cry. It's heavy. It's it heavy. Oh, so heavy. And yeah. I don't exactly know why. So I, I guess what I am vulnerably allowing to happen is that this is more of a a groaning of my heart. Yeah. That sometimes we don't have the eloquence and the words. And this comparison is so perfect because some days I feel so eloquent and spot on with my relationship with God. Right. And when I read the word, I am like joyful and I'm drinking it up and I'm excited. And he must know something in my heart yes. that I need to get out. Yes. And it's okay if it comes out in groanings. That's this right. An example of the groanings. This is an example of just, you know, this is David, but he's also prophesying. He's also speaking ahead. This is Jesus on the cross. Yes. You understand like, I think part of this is the fact that it's the Easter season and I am in awe of what Jesus did. And um, I cannot believe I'm doing this on, you know, whatever. So um, in 2016, I read this verse and I wrote the word why. I used pen, so it was the same. So I'm assuming it was in 16. And when I read, why do you remain so distant? And why do you ignore my cries for a help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. 
every night you hear my voice, but I feel no relief. And I wrote why, because I was a, it was a different season in my Christianity and my faith. And I, I clung to these words and I said, why, why would this even be a thing? If we're Christ followers, why pain? Why suffering? Why aren't you an on-demand God? And then today, this morning, when I am like just bravely doing this, ladies, I am men, I am not equipped to do this. Often I will compare myself to Joy and she and I will rebuke it. I'll, I'll, I'll confess it out. I know better not to um, keep it to myself. And I'll listen to Joy and I will for a hot second compare myself that she can remember all these scriptures and she's so eloquent and she's, I know, you know, like we go through this, but this is so perfect because, um, gosh, I don't even remember why I was saying that. I can't remember what little tangent I was about to go on, but I'm going to stop there. So I'm reading this again this morning. Oh, that's right. This morning I was come before him and I'm like, I don't know what words to say. I, 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 I am in a moment of suffering where I am living out this, these verses that we're about to go by um, step by step where I am looking death in the face. I am looking at death in the face. And I am holding on to my truth yeah. is in God and salvation in eternity. Like I, I too can't explain always what's going on in my household, Yeah. but I cling to this truth that I've been holding on to. Yeah. And, um, and so this morning when I'm like, where God, why are you having me do this. I do not feel equipped to come before people and read the word that sometimes I don't even understand it. And he said, that's exactly where I want you because most people don't pick up this word until they feel like they are clean and are perfect and that the chaos in their life is and their work life and their schedule changes and their kids are behaving and their schedule is just so perfect so that this fits in. And he's like, I want you to show up Apparently he knew what I would be doing anyway. So I'm sitting before the Lord, trying to like get the sweat off my hands and figure this out. And I look at what I had written time before in, in the apparently in 16 in 2016. And so today for seven 20, I wrote under the word, why, why would, why my God, my God, why wouldn't you answer when I'm in my suffering and I want to end this suffering and below it, I joyfully wrote the words for me, for me, where before I'm like, I don't get it. And today I am like, oh my gosh, this is Jesus on the cross. This is how I'm choosing to read it in this time right now. Not necessarily David, but that Jesus did this and suffered so the suffering joy is talking about and that you are processing right now and, and that I am feeling it hit, Jesus did this for me, for my sins, for my transgressions, for my pain, so that my pain can be immediately claimed for victory. And right now, as I'm staring death in the face potentially, and then I'm like, but I know it's for my good. And it has been a decade of an exercise for me to be able to look at pain in the face and say, I know what's going on. This suffering is for my good, for me. Mm. And it, it took suffering and groanings and tears to get to a point where I'm like, this really, excuse me, I don't like using this word, but this really sucks right now. But at the exact same time, I can say, but yet, which is about to come when I stop talking, but yet, yet I know this is for my good. So I'm going to let you take it from here and I'm going to wipe my face. I think we all are. <laughs> Let's just take a minute. It's just um, the thing about, you know, as you, is because I think there's a lot of people that are probably weeping right along with you. 
is that tears, tear, we, uh, it's almost an invitation to allow ourselves just to cry. I don't care if you're a woman, you're a man, I, just a human being. It's just, there's a weeping involved, right? There is weeping involved with anguish and suffering and heartache and real life issues that we are smack dab in the middle of right now. And yet in 22, like you just read, Tara, interesting thing about 22 is Jesus knew the very words that you're reading right now, Jesus knew by heart. He knew. So that's what I love about God's word is these, especially the Old Testament. When you read the Old Testament, you just know that God, Jesus knew those words. He read those words. He cried over those words. He read this psalm. And I have a feeling when he'd wake up in the middle of the, or sometimes in the middle of the night, very early in the morning, like we are doing right now, he would go to a mountainside. He would go to just an isolation part of, of, of his city where he was staying. And he would lament. He would look at verse 22. He would read it. He would meditate on it. He would cry over it. He would use it as his prayer. And we ought to be know that because when he was on the cross that we're going to be, you know, leading up to this weekend, he actually said that, that verse 22, one, he repeated that. That's what he said. It, he knew it so well that in his greatest ang angu anguish, his greatest um, pain, emotional, spiritual, um, mental, physical, what came out of him was not of his flesh, but was words that were already spoken into his belief system from David. It just poured out of him scripture. And so we read from 22, one through uh, two with Tara of where, where are you? What Tara just said in the tears, like sometimes I don't know where you're even at. Do you see this pain I am in? I am suffering and I feel all alone. And then David writes all that down and then he goes right to three. And this is where this is, um, this is a, not only an example, but and not only a tool, but a, um, a way of life that could be life altering, life changing, life transforming for all of us listening to David pen this out because he, in his, in his feelings that are telling him, God isn't near the enemy is just like, he's forsaking you. He's left you. He's going to leave you out in this pain. He's not going to show up. This is going to be a mess that is just going to end in disaster and destruction, right? The enemy, he just doesn't stop. But David, he looked straight in the enemy's eyes and said, no, my feelings will not dictate my reality. And then he goes into verse three. He stops the feelings, mm -hmm. even though he's still feeling them. And he goes straight into his belief system. Now, the belief system is what, you, what we've all been reading this whole week. He's my restorer. He's my healer. He's my redeemer. He's my shepherd. He's my comforter. He's my guide, right? It's almost repetitive what we're reading. It's like, you read that in the Psalms. It's like this Psalm again, we just read that. Well, the reason it's so repetitive is because the more we read it over and over and over and over again, it then starts to plant itself into our belief system. Not so that it's, it's there on a great day when everything's going well and the family's all getting well, great together and life's going well and you haven't had deep losses and deep pains and deep trials and all of that. This is for times like this, what you just heard Tara say and what I experienced and what I've experienced in the past and what you've experienced in your own heartache. Maybe you're flat out in it right now. Mm -hmm. This is where the belief system comes in of the repetitiveness of being in his word, of knowing his yeah. character. And it's anchored. It's stable. Yes, yes, the, the circumstances, might, you might feel like you're on a boat and you're going to and fro, but you are anchored, your belief system. And so what he did is he paused and he went right into verse three. And he says this, I get my glasses on. Yet, as Tara said, yet, right? Right in the middle of you're not here yet. Papa, you are holy. You are perfect. You are good. And he's like basically saying, you are enthroned on the praises of Israel, right? You are enthroned on the, on the praises of my heart. My ancestors trusted in you and you rescued them. What is he doing right here? He's going back into his memory. Your memory is one of the greatest tools God has given you. That's why this journal writing is, is a game changer in your life, because you're going to be able to go back as Tara did in her Bible. She wrote down, she wrote down the date. She wrote down what she was feeling, you know, that if he showed up, then he's going to show up. Now the enemy is going to tell you right now in your suffering, he's not going to show up for you. And then we have this like amnesia for a moment of, we forget that he showed up in 2016. We forget that he showed up in 2004. We forget. But when we write it down, the enemy can't erase those words. And we go back to, wait a minute, 
he, he did it then he he's gonna I'm gonna set it out he's gonna do it again and even if he's never done it in our life what David did is he went back to his ancestors oh you did that for my uncle you did that for my grandma you did that for this family that was like family to me that means that and you have no favorites that means you can do it for me too Yes. You know, it's like, it's, it's allowing ourselves to have a perspective change and go back to our memories. And that's what David does here. Mm -hmm. And then he says, they cried out to you and they were saved. They trusted in you and were never disgraced. And then what happens in verse, uh, verse six, his flesh takes over his feelings whew, come back. Right. right and then Tara, I'm going to let you go with that, with him yeah. going back to his feelings. Yeah, so he's just lamenting and, and feeling, but I am a worm and not a man. Uh -huh. I am scorned and despised by all. Everyone who sees me mocks me. They sneer and shake their heads saying, is this the one who relies on the Lord? Then let the Lord save him. If the Lord loves him so much, ooh, this just, hello, this just triggered me. And if the Lord loves him so much, let the Lord rescue him. And so my personal connection, remember, that's why we read the Bible to know God's character, to be able to use this, to help us go through the valley, the shadow of the, the dark valley of death, yep. but I, I, and, and to read us. And right now, what I, what I'm connecting to this is if I'm in my pit and I'm thinking, yeah, but and I am thinking about being a Christ follower. And uh, some people believe like, well, then you shouldn't have trials. And tr we already talked about that. You shouldn't have trials or, well, where's your God? Well, yeah. Tara, you've been praying the same thing. So I'll go back to a personal, I, I put a Facebook post out there with my oldest son who really has had one trial after another, after another, after another, after another. And then in my prayer life, it's been about seven years that I have been praying and praying and praying. And I have been sometimes going to the, my God, my God, why have you forsaken my son, my son? And then I would think about going back to my pit and say, well, look at Tara's a Christ follower and look at her life. Now, I hope you see joy I hope it's funny because I wore yellow almost on purpose. Like it drew me to the light and like sunshiny, even though I feel like that. But I worry that sometimes people think about, well, if Oof. your Lord, you, you're hitting it right. You're hitting it right now. We are all relating to everything. Your Lord saying. will save you, right? If you're relying on the Lord, why do you have to pray for seven years yeah. Why doesn't it just happen? I don't want a Lord like that while well, I'm sitting in it, facing it saying, and then I'll let joy take over instead of talk more because it's the yet. It is the yet that I'm holding on to. And if it takes seven years to get glory on the other side, I know him because of my past. I bring it up like my home invasion in 08. Listen to me without that suffering, without joy's marriage suffering and without my my nightmare coming true in 08. That is my evidence. That's my yet that I cling to. So if I, if you showed up for me in my nightmare, then you are going to show up for my son. And if I have to pray Amen. seven, and if I have to pray 14 years, I know what's on the other end. So I hold on to that yet, which is what Joy is going to get into, no matter yeah. what anyone thinks. And I'm a recovering people pleaser. So I have to diminish where the enemy wants to say quietly, yeah, but where's your Lord now? And I'll have to, and then I just, now I'm like, yet, and then joy takes over and take us to that next pace. Yeah. Place. So then he, so yeah, after he, so well put Tara, after he's, you know, I'm a worm of a man and all this, then he goes into, okay, yet he goes back to his belief system and he says, yet you brought me safely from my mother's womb and you led me to trust you at my mother's breast i was thrust into your arms at birth you have been my god from the moment i was born yes. that right there when you allow yourself to to go back to wait a minute 
you are the one who implanted me in my mother's womb. You have a purpose. You have a destination. You have a mission on my life, on my child's life, on whoever's life that you've been praying for for the 14 years that Tara just referred to. You have a, pur you have a purpose. You have never not taken your eyes off that person, off of me. It then takes our flesh, right? Those feelings that have, we've, have been made our engine, puts them back in their place of the caboose, like we talked about yesterday. And then it brings him back, as David so beautifully did, brought him back to truth. Yes, he was stating some facts. He feels like a worm. He feels like less of a man. He's all messed up royally. Uh, this isn't coming to fruition. All these facts. And then God goes, wait a minute, let's stop right now. And let me just lavish you with truth, truth of how much I love you, truth of how much I'm always with you, truth of what I'm doing behind, behind doors that you can't even see. I'm asking you right now, David, Tara, Joy, all these beautiful names that I'm seeing come across. He's talking to you right now. He's saying, I want you to wait in my presence, tightly woven in that braid with me so that I can do a new work because I am actually using this time to prepare you I'm using this quarantine time. I'm using this, this, this anguish of your heart for whatever it is that is happening in your personal life right now. I am using this so that we're no longer just blowing in the wind, tossing to and fro, but bringing you closer with me. And, um, hmm. I think we're going to end. I think we're going to end there because it's already 8:45. Tara with, as far as scripture reading is concerned, is there yeah. any last minute, is there any last minute, um, anything in, on your heart that you want to end with? <laughs> no, because I'm, I'm afraid what's going to come out. <laughs> um, so I mean, what I, what I, I want to real quick, I, I guess what I want to do, because this was heavy this week, we've been, or today, not this week, today, um, I think more than ever, if you're not, if you haven't been journal writing, I think more than ever now is the time to do that when we, when we close up and maybe give yourself permission to do what David did here. You know, David, who, 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 uh, freely, um, spoke from what he was feeling, his feelings, he brought them out before the Lord. And, uh, I would highly recommend you do that today. Find a quiet space when we, when we get off here and really let God just allow the, the, the tears to flow. They're very cleansing. If you're in that place, if that is what you're needing right now. Um, and you know, really just going over what it is that we have been talking about and recognizing that there is, that you can only re receive freedom and joy by going through the anguish and the suffering and the despair, feeling it in order to be able to heal from it. And I think today, I really believe this. I felt this when I woke up this morning, when I spoke with Tara, we both, we both felt this. I think there was true, um, life altering healing that happened this morning in these, the short 45 minutes. I truly believe that with everything in me. Um, and if that's the case, write about it, tell God about it, talk to him about it. Uh, but I, I don't think this was a 45 minutes of just entertainment and fluff and good, feel good stuff. Not that it has been for the last week and a half, because all that stuff has been good. We needed to know who God was, but this is where the, the rubber hits the road. This is where it's real life stuff. This is where we find Jesus. So Tara, um, if you have anything else to say, um, go for it. And then maybe could you, could you close us all in prayer? I will try to close us in prayer. Um, I just want to take a minute and connect with people. Um, I'm, I'm just scrolling through and I'm noticing that people did need to hear this encouragement and um, the vulnerability and us showing up every day and doing this even when we don't fully understand what we're doing. And my hands are a little less clammy, but you know, this is, this is just a moment I want to live out loud to, it just to try to articulate. Sometimes you don't have the words. Okay. So sometimes I pause like this just to like, let the Holy spirit do the talking. And when I say Holy spirit, I just learned about the Holy spirit a few within the last few years that, and I, I missed out on a really big component in our faith walk that when we choose J Jesus to be the leader of our life, to be our guide, our counselor, our comforter, our go-to. And, and this visual I have that even if I can't find the words, because Joy and I are, are passionate about 
journaling and sometimes, and I, and listen, I wish I could grab it right now. I remember ladies, men, whomever's listening, there were times I would journal and my handwriting articulated how I felt. And yes. there's one time that is imprinted in my brain that I was so mad that I would, I tore the paper yes. with my pencil, right? That mechanical pencil that if you get it down just enough, it's just the metal. And I let it tear the paper. And I thought, oh, I probably should, you know, tear this out. And I left it in there. And I'm so glad I did because I can go back and see where yeah. I was in distress and agony and whatever it was. And then know that th there was light, there were, there were answers that he was always, so this is where the Holy Spirit comes in. I am all, he is always with us. Yes. In this Easter season, I, I, I've said this for sure two years, but I'm feeling it super heavy this Easter season that I do not want to be the same person next Monday morning. You understand? I want to leave when I journal it, when I confess it out specifically this week, into this weekend, and I'm going to be doing this exercise with my kids if they like it or not. <laughs> I want to get out stuff that doesn't belong in the lies, the, the lies that are, that stop us from believing truth. I want to get those lies out. Amen. And I don't, and so that's what it means to uh, nail them to the tree or to the cross or let them die with Jesus. Yes. Get them out this season, this weekend, journal it out page after page after page and let it die this weekend so that on Monday, you are a new person. You are... You know, in the whole coaching world, I, I love leveling up. I love being the best version of ourselves. But what I mean to the core is that we allow Jesus to do his work and that it was good for nothing. Like I want it to be good because he did it for me in the way that I can recognize. And, and it's not about the Easter baskets and it's not about, and I'm not knocking it. It's a great thing. But Sometimes even that pattern, we have to remember that that clouds us from the really paying attention to the suffering that he did for me. And so I just invite all of us into this vulnerability that I don't know why he's asking Joy and myself and me in particular to be the one that needed to cry. I kind of wish that was her role. And I think I we all did. <laughs> I don't think we were alone in our crying. <laughs> And so I just want to suffer with him in this week if I need to, so that I can get it out and leave it there and don't pick it back up so that I can be the best version, the fully equipped version that I was designed before birth, right? And so with my son and our children that we care so much about. So Sometimes it comes out in groanings is my point and right. let them come out in just tears and groanings. He hears us. He hears us. Amen. And Joy, I really, I am really relying on you today, which is what's beautiful about being in community. I'd love for you to pray us out because I just, sure. I want to listen. I want to receive right now. Sure. So let's all just, um, let's all just take a minute, take a deep breath. Um, thank you for all still being here an hour, almost an hour into this and, um, you know, and really just come before him and recognize that, um, he's here with us. He's listening to our prayer. He's listening to all of this. And so I just want to, let's just pray father. We just, uh, we thank you. We thank you for what it is that you did in this, in this 50 minutes, father, I, I feel you tangibly. I I'm experiencing your touch right now and, um, it's thick. I, I, I'm in it. And I thank you for that. Lord God, I thank you, father, that we're reading your words that penetrate into the deepest part of our heart that nobody else, no one else's words can even get to, but you, you do. And you, you open us up so tenderly, so kindly, and you dissect us and you do a new surgery, a heart surgery within us, Lord God. And you remove the toxins and the, and the cancerous cells and the lies that the enemy has implanted that to keep us in bondage and to keep us enslaved to that, to the very things of this world that will steer us away from you. And Father, thank you that uh, David had the courage and the boldness to pen out his pain, 
his trials, his heartache, his anguish of his heart, so that we can see this as a an example of what it is that you're after in our own lives. You don't want us to hide it. You don't want us to stuff it. Uh, in fact, those are the very things that make us toxic, that allow that bitter root to grow and trouble us, but they end up defiling many. The very people that are so near and dear to our heart, they end up paying the consequences of us stuffing. Mm-hmm. So Father, would we be women that refuse to stuff? That Would you just shine your light right into our hearts right now, as you say in Luke? light us up, light me up, reveal anything and everything in me, Father God, that the enemy is trying to hide in the dark corners of my heart, reveal it. Father, allow me to walk through the suffering, walk through the anguish, feel the pain so that you can heal my pain, so that you can allow purpose to grow from it, that you can prepare it, what it is that you're doing in the suffering for what it is that you have for me and have for Tara and have for every person hearing your words speak through my voice. Father, it is unimaginable. It is incomprehensible. It is unfathomable what it is, what it is that you have for every person listening right now who loves you. Father, I can't even imagine what 140 women who, who decide to endure the suffering. We are no longer running away from the suffering, but we are going to be that warrior woman, that warrior man that says, I'm going straight into it because I know, I know that I know that I know that I know that I know because your word tells me so that there is life, there is freedom, there is joy, there is hope in abundance, supersized on the other side of this pain. Father, thank you that you don't leave us in the pain. Thank you that you walk us. As Tara said yesterday, we are walking through that pain. We don't stay still. We don't camp out there. We don't park our hearts there. We walk. Mm -hmm. We walk with our head held high. We feel the pain, but it is strengthening us for what it is that you have. We are no longer going to be lukewarm, uh, defeated, pew-seating people. No No more. Just no more. We don't want the lip service. We want a heart condition. We don't want behavior modification anymore. We want heart transformation. Do that work within us, Papa. Thank you for these precious people. Thank you for this community. This is only you. This is only you. Who else could do this? Father, thank you for changed lives today. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you. And Father, it is only you that we give glory to. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Love you. Love you, Tara. Love you, ladies. I love you too. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being part of uh, our morning. We'll see you tomorrow at eight. See you tomorrow morning at eight. Bye. Bye.